Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to this, your Sunday Talking Town, the flagship podcast from the platform that's for the fans, by the fans of the greatest, the most beautiful, the brilliantest Ipswich Town Football Club, and they tamed the shrews yesterday, didn't they, Just Three nil winners never really broke a sweat, it seemed. We'd love to hear from you this afternoon. There's a live chat. All Super Chats are out, read out if you should so wish to give us a Super Chat. But I will try and get to as many comments through the live chat as I possibly can. And of course, there'll be a live link as well for you to have your say in your words unfiltered on your platform. That is what we are all about here. Giving you, the fans of ITSC, the power to have your say any way you want. As a media platform, as a pla- platform... For the fans, we have got some interesting and entertaining content coming up for you. 9 p.m. this evening, talking cricket. Rich and his crew are back to deliver. Well, England have gone back to form, right? I don't know. I'm not a cricket fan. I'm looking forward to hearing what they're going to have to say. And of course, the boxing last night, Alexander Usek. The last three rounds were absolutely special. Up until that point, it could have gone either way. In the ninth, I thought AJ had him, but it was. I won't say anymore in case you've not yet seen the fight, but we do hope to do a talking boxing, a talking knockouts, rather, uh, reaction roundup uh, once Matt has finished with his family duties. And by the way, a happy birthday to uh, a Peter Cox, of course, Bricktop, and a happy birthday to Mama Phillips. Have a great afternoon. Uh, I think it's Walton on the Nays, I think they've been. Not been there in absolute donkey years. Right, few comments. Colin Plum. It absolutely, I don't think we've been able to contain Colin uh, since yesterday afternoon. I think if there's a HMS Pista League, Colin is front central captain of that ship. He He's Commodore, actually, to be fair. He's literally on it, running it, powering it. Uh, Stephen Parry, afternoon, all great. 3-0 win the ball, uh, roll on, roll on. Win, win, get point Saturday. We have an unbeaten August. Uh, Lee Brown, I'm in Lee Brown in the comments. Gino in the comments. Carl Brooks going to bring some some one liners this afternoon. Looking forward to that. Stephen Davis, uh, Stephen Parry, sorry. Uh, Davis nearly had two assists yesterday. Good for Jackson, but shame Sam's shot cleared off the line. Good afternoon, AD, the Stone Market legend. I hope you are well. Uh, Richard Chandler's keeping his feet on the ground, but it's difficult. Absolutely, we'll probably start with that. I'll ask the cruncher for the hard truth. How should we be? Feeling should it be up in the clouds with Colin or should it be feet on the ground like Richard Chandler there? Arthur, Nick, Jason, lots of you in the chat. Absolutely love to see. I will try and get to as many comments as I possibly can. But of course, as I said, super chats are read out. And if you're watching this and you have to nip out, if you're watching this back, we are available on all audio platforms. Just search Talking Town ITFC and you will have 99.9% of the shows available to take wherever you go with you. Uh, I just put on this morning the match reaction broadcast, a half an hour from yesterday evening. So if you've not heard that, not seen that, then please do check that out. Right. Let's crack on with it. Let's go ahead. Oh, actually, don't forget, Barnsley next week. Barnsley tickets are open. The draw for Barnsley. Uh, get involved. That's the wrong view, but you can still be there. Still be a part of what is turning into an absolute momentous wave of the Cruncher, Richard Moss. You're right. talking out of Kim. There he is, Mr. Moss. How are um, we? Two ticks. Two ticks. Just two ticks. Play me camera. Good grief. That's better. There we How go. I am very well, thank you. Very yes. tight. Very yeah, sure. Very emotional still. And congratulations again to Mr. and Mrs. Moles. A beautiful wedding evening last night. How uh, did you open up? How did you open up the speech? What was your first uh, line? My first line was, uh, hello, I'm Martin, one of the best men. And I've heard the best man speech shouldn't last as long as the groom can in bed. So with that, thanks for your attention and good night. And that was it. That was did it get lost? Line. It did, thankfully. Only by, only by the people that I prepped to laugh. But yeah, we, we it, move on. We move. Was it a tough, was it a tough crowd? Uh, a few of them were, yeah. A few of them were, were man, 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 childs. But we, we move, Mister Moss. We move, my friend, because we're here, obviously, on the back of domination. We're here on the back of another three 0 We've not broke a sweat all week. Well, Burton, maybe. I, I'm being a bit, bit, bit disgenuine there. But Colin is in the clouds. Colin's already planning his trip to, 
to Ashton Gate to anywhere else in the championship. I've forgotten who's in it now. I think that's no longer removed. Uh, but others like Richard are keeping feet firmly on the ground. Where are you, Rich? What's the hard truth on this one? I said to Colin this morning, right? We we have to enjoy it because obviously we, winning makes you happy, Martin. You know, we we've had enough shows since we've been doing this where we've been a bit sort of negative. So we need to be really positive. But it is five games. I said to Colin, no trophies, no medals are handed out in August. There's no open top bus tours. You know, no, it's just, no, no. It's just a start, and it's a really, really good start. You know. First four back-to-back league wins since 2019 and a certain Mr. Lambert. Many yeah. have said it feels different to that time. Oh, yeah, 100%. Does it? Yeah, 100%. It's the positivity around the, cra- around the ground, um, in the dressing room, obviously in the f- with the fans. I-, I was sort of thinking back this morning, Martin, about sort of that run under Lambert. I think we got 27 points out of the first 11 games. And... Several of them games we didn't play very well. I didn't think we we were we were winning games, and you know, and then we were doing the order, holding the hands, weren't we, and waving to the crowd. That sort oh. of paper going on, then it was a bit oh, sort of a bit yeah, cringeworthy. Right. Whereas I said to um, who was I talking to? I can't remember. I think it might have been on the Discord chat um, last night when Stephen Parry was on and Chris. Yeah, right. um, you wouldn't know. Listening to a Kieran McKenna interview, Martin, whether we'd won or whether we'd lost, right? Yeah. He keeps it on that level all the time, doesn't he? And I think yeah. he is um he's a perfectionist, you know. He wasn't he wasn't very happy the other night. I know he wasn't very happy with the performance. There was a few changes yesterday. And everybody, not just on a match day, in training, they've got to keep up them standards, Martin. They've got mm. to keep up in standards, and I think he drives it, McKenna. And I think it's, it's look, it's all good, and it's it's only a start. But I'm looking at that league table already, and it's it's, t- it's, t- it's taking shape. You think because you got your Peterboroughs up there, you have got your Sheffield Wednesdays, Portsmouth have surprised me. They've had they've had a re- really good start. I see Piggott got on the score sheet yesterday. Good for so. him. Good for him. Good for the football club. Obviously, yeah. still our player. That's the important thing to, to sort of maintain with that. I'm just looking at this record here with Lambert. And the first games were Wigan, obviously, a 2 0 win, beat Bristol Rovers, beat Rochdale. So, neither of those three clubs were any good at that moment in time. Wigan were in turmoil, if you remember. MK Dons was a point, and Blackpool was a 4 1 win. And that was a, a bit of a shock of a. That was the, the standout performance for that Lambert run, the Blackpool, because that was a. No one really expected it. Luke Chambers with the world class volley. But this time, you know, we've had Bolton. You've had MK, who are a strong side. People expected to be up there or there or thereabouts. You've had a couple of more heavy hitters, and, and we've come through. And this week alone, Rich, seven goals, zero uh, goals conceded. And and m- many would, would tell you, you, you've never really got out of second gear. I was talking to Mike this morning, and that's what he said. We haven't got out of second gear yet, and we've comfortably seen off Shrewsbury yesterday. I thought they were really poor, mine. I thought... I expected it to be a lot tougher game, and so did Matt. I, so did I Mike. Didn't. I, you know, didn't. I, thought, I thought going there. I thought, but the thing I think when you look at it, they played Derby obviously in the week, didn't they? Yeah. Didn't didn't make any substitutions, right? Yeah. Named the same eleven yesterday, whereas we changed five players, and it shows yeah. the level that we are on and Shrewsbury are on. You know, we can change five, and it didn't make a lot of difference. You know, whereas them. They probably had to play that same eleven because that's their best, best team, you know. So I was surprised that they didn't really cause a lot of threat, but I was happy. I said in when we were chatting at half time that it was, it was really comfortable, wasn't it? We got that goal, but mm. we didn't really, we hadn't taken the game by the scruff of the neck. I said get that early goal in the second half, and and we'd done that, and then we made it easy. I know they had a couple of sort of times they got in second half, but Walton had a pretty sort of comfortable afternoon and then obviously Jackson got his goal at the end and it was 3-0 and I think Walton could have sat with us couldn't he really I think Walton could have gone and sat with with Colin yeah. in, 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 in the stands a, a lot of time yesterday afternoon I wasn't expecting an easy ride but I wasn't expecting you know, Friday night when we were talking uh, as tough a game as perhaps I was I was being told so I was surprised still because you know Cottrell was a good manager and how delighted are you before I get some comments on from the from the chat that you know, a manager of cultural standing, a manager of his experience. The first thing he's asked when he says, "What's your what, what, what's your breakdown of today's game?" They're just better than us in every yeah. department. Honest, 
You know, that's that is an honest assessment from a manager. But how one... good does it sound to hear that as your you know oh, as your club? They're just better than us. Every department. I've not heard that a long time coming from an opposition manager. A lot of times it was when we've played well but haven't got the result, and then mm. you get the plaudits from the opposition manager. And I don't like that. You know, oh yeah, Ipswich are a really good side. Well, managers are going to say that because they've taken points off us. Whereas yesterday he was just being he was being honest. You know, he, and he played, praised how we played and. Long may it continue because this is what this is what we want, isn't it? It's it really what you is want as yeah. a football fan. You know, you want to, want your team to be winning, you want to be scoring goals. But if you look, Martin, twenty nine games, I think it is now under Kieran McKenna, we have kept 16, 16 clean sheets, and we've only let in fifteen goals. So if you replicate that sort of over that season, we, we're not going to be shipping many goals. You know, it's at the other end. We were a little bit worried, but then we've scored 10 goals in five games. So we're averaging two goals a game. We're over that two points a game. So there's nothing to grumble at. We can't really grumble. No, 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 no. Absolutely. A few comments from, from the from, from the live chat. We love the comments. Keep them coming. Stephen Parry, Shrews will cause problems to teams. We made five changes, which shows our depth. Rob Holmes, one of our YouTube members this week, showed the depth of our squad compared to lots of the other top teams who stuck to the same 11 for three matches. Cali says we flute wins on the Schamberg. Whereas now we deserve to win fully. He also goes on to say, I had a good conversation with Sammy and JD. All right, Kelly, name drop, mate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Belief is there. I don't think we need we move from the top two all season. Uh, Connor, also so great to see those players come out from back to the system, the manager in each other. Jason Clayton, the difference is McKenna will be back in January. So there's any injuries or shortfalls, he'll get what he wants from the owners that didn't have that with Evans. Um, Rich is really pleased with McKenna criticising the technical aspects of the first half, Rich. Um, I saw a little bit of Fishman saying that, you know, when I do it, it's negative, but it, when McKenna does it, it's great. Well, one is the manager and one is not. How but how right is Mike? How how important is it that McKenna comes out, even after a 3-0 dominating win, and criticises those I think he was, he's correct what he was saying and Mike counted I think Chaplin gave the ball away I think seven times Mike counted in that first half we were a little bit lackadaisical uh, he gave the ball away a few times Danassian got to take care of that ball you yeah. know but look it's good that the managers we've won 3-0 and he's still looking at them aspects of the game because he wants it to be it's, it's never going to be perfect is it no you know but he wants it as near perfect as we can get, and it's going to be another look. It, I, I like it that there's there's no game this week. We can get back, train all week, get some of them injured players. Hopefully, Dominic Ball can have a full week on the grass, as they say, Martin. You know, Wes. Hopefully, Wes Burns can, can get fit. Look, Wes Burns has not played in two games. That's um, good for us in the sense we've won the games. He's rested the groin. Hopefully, yeah. now he's going to come back a fully a fully healed, fully ready to go. And if he isn't, I'd rest him again. I, I you know, while yeah, you're managing to win games. I'm not going to say we didn't miss him because he's he's if he's fit he plays. You but will forever miss a Wes Bird at this debate. Yeah, we won two games without him, and I thought Kane Vincent Young had a very good game yesterday. I thought he, he played well down that right hand side. Should have had a penalty early. I still I've, I've watched that about three or four times this morning, Martin, and I still cannot understand. Nope, me neither. What the ref is looking at? I couldn't is then it, either. Is it because it's so early in the game that he's going to have to send oh, the guy off? I said to Colin, it shouldn't matter. If that's in the first minute or in the last minute, it's a penalty and it's a red card. He's got nowhere near the ball. I thought you had a double jeopardy, but I might I might be wrong on uh, that. Yeah, right. I, yeah, there is that if you make an attempt for the ball or if you just wipe somebody out. And it, it, he literally wiped him out, didn't he? I mean, first of all, it was amazing that Cain Vincent Young was the furthest forward player in yeah. the six-yard box, but that's a clear cut. Well, penalty and I couldn't believe it yesterday and I still sit here today and had we drew, drawn that game had that game gone in another direction we would all be sitting here absolutely furious because it's not just a marginal like Leif Davis is one against Bolton this is a stone wall as much as you're going to get any day on a Saturday Sunday up and yeah. down the country that was a stone wall and I don't know yeah, what he's done or how the linesmen have missed it where the linesmen are looking even if you're a linesman, you know, on, on, on that side, you've got to be looking at that ball because there's no offside to be playing. So what are you doing? It's nonsense. It's, I think if you look at it again, the refs, he's in a perfect position as well. So I, I just I don't know. Look, it didn't matter in the end. We could all sit here, we can laugh about it now because it was um, it's not at the time, you're though. thinking, blimey. You know, that is two minutes into the game. It's the perfect start. You know, you could go 1-0 up. I know you've got to score the penalty, but glad it didn't matter on another day. It might do. So, um 
You could have gone with a, uh, oh, here we go again, really, couldn't you? At yeah. that point in time, it's like, oh, no, is it going to be one of those sort of days? Uh, Mike the Fishman, think we are good now. Wait until we have that perfect game. Some teams are going to get uh, a battering from the Fisherman. Look at that little play on pun. I like it. Moby, Crunch, you are still biting the hand off to make the playoffs? I met Moby the other night. You know, he give, he um, donated to the tickets for um, Volunteering Matters. Did you know, what of you, Moby... Right. Guess what Moby does for a living? You never guess. Makes music? No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Very good. He is a professional gambler. No way. Yeah, he is a professional gambler. He does it for a living. I was talking to him at the pub. Really, really nice guy as well. Great guy. Really pleased to meet him as well. We don't obviously recommend that you sit there at home and think that's a profession you should take well, up. Matt Phillips, he's still claiming that he can turn £5 pounds into 30 but Well, in the Discord that. chat, Chris said about the accumulator. And my, my, my words of advice to Chris about what he should do today was to just keep your fiver in your back pocket. Like, don't go wasting it. Just, 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 he said it's too late. He's already done it. Um, but if you do want to get involved on that Discord, and last night was really good with the USIC fight. There was lots and lots of banter. I've not been on it much, obviously, having been best man at a wedding. Yeah, but if you want to get on it... Spoilers for the boxing, because you said you... No, no, no. We 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 left just as it was like rounds four, round four. Okay. So I was able to, you know, get. Well, we were late home because we basically sat in a car park and watched it. She wasn't happy, but she has to live with that. Fact. It's fine. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. But uh, if you want to get involved, become a YouTube member or a, or a co five fifth stander. Some great boxing, talking knockouts. I watched it this morning. Brilliant, great it show. Really Matt good, Phillips man. is just so knowledgeable on boxing. Cheers, mate. I mean, there was two of us in that show, but cheers. Well, it's all right. It's fine. He's fed, you, he's fed you a few lines there, hasn't he? He's tried to, but none of the lines he feeds me are not worth repeating on air. Uh, Jen Mars, the big question, do we need another striker? Before I ask you about Caden Jackson, do we need another striker? Oh, if, there's, if it's a good player available and it's the right figure, I think, yeah, why not? I, I, it's a long season. It's five games, a couple of injuries. Jackson gets injured or Ladapo, you know, or... John Jules, we're probably going to talk about him. You know, we're, we're still going to be short. I know you've got Chaplin you can play out there, who's well, still claiming, as as McKenna said in his interview last night, Connor is still claiming he's a number nine. That's I like that. Said. I like that. Keep 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 on that manager's ear. But obviously, a striker, you could argue you needed before, but then obviously there's, there's, there's a little bit, I mean, and I say a little bit, it's a square about the size of a Nats What's It in a, a newspaper today. I'm not, I don't know which one. Uh, indicating maybe Huddersfield are weighing up options for Caden Jackson. Uh, could could a deal be made with Ipswich? Okay, the voice, the voice Tyree after. Well, this is it. But I, I this is what the article read. This is what the what, what I saw, and then I dub, I double checked it because the one after it was a Wolves article. So I googled the Wolves news, and it was the player they were linked with. So I was like, okay, so it's relevant. It's this year because obviously Huddersfield have been linked previously. Yeah, before that, yeah. If that was something that was to be actually more than just 180 characters for for, for a space that needed fill in, would would you be happy seeing Caden depart? Do you Caden think? No, no, that that would make no sense at all for me. I know right. he's not playing every week and he's not going to be regular, but we've given him a two year contract. You know, I don't think we've given him a two year contract and then I don't think we have no. a month into the season he's gonna he's gonna go to Huddersfield because we'll be in the championship next season. With I like that. I like that. So Caden Jackson's performance yesterday. Let's touch on that. How did you think he played? He came off the bench, didn't he? And I, um, he referenced him and Kane Vincent Young in his, in his post-match interview, like how well they're trained. You know, because both of them, Martin, know that they're probably not going to be, when everyone's fit, they're not going to be regulars. But like I've said before, like I said to Colin this morning, right, it's not, it's not your first 11 that's getting you out of this league. No. It's your 18, it's your 20 players. You know, we've still got Don Ball to come back in. He'll play a part somewhere along the line. So these players, when they come in, and look, I know Mike, the fisherman, he was saying, oh, Jackson, yeah, he's, it's light off his shin pad. It doesn't matter. He could blast it in the top corner from 30 yards. It don't matter if you score it from one yard. It only counts as one goal. He was Johnny on the spot there, and that'll do his confidence no end of good. And I think he deserved that, Mike, from his performance the other night at Burton. You know, mm. when I thought he had a good game. And he's he's in the right place at the right time, and he's got himself a goal. And that Ladapo would have loved that, wouldn't he? Ladapo would have loved to have been there to get a tap in to get him off running, get him off and running. But he'll have to wait for his. John Jewell's got his goal. Jackson's got his goal. Hopefully next week it's Freddie's turn. 
Hopefully so. Yeah. I mean, that's what Freddie needs, isn't it? And that that type of goal. And he was yeah. in the area and I, you know, a live view. And I was like, oh, is, is he, you know, is he going to get it? Is it? And it, it obviously hit Jackson, fell to Jackson. And, and Jackson was 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 Johnny on the on, on the spot, as you say. But he he does. I think he deserved that goal purely from the Burton performance. I'm still very impressed yeah. with how he performed Tuesday. That he deserved. He's deserved that piece of luck. He deserved to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it's like Nathan Curtis says, they're right place at the right time. And uh, but the fisherman says he didn't even know it come to him. But he's there, Mike. It doesn't matter. You see him, he's gone in the goal. If he knew about it or he didn't know about it, it, it all counts. And it'll do Caden's confidence the world a good, I think. Positioning. Yeah, absolutely. you, you got to be in the right place at the right time for even for that piece of luck uh, to happen. Connor Chaplin. How was his overall game? Because there were some really good points and really some and not some really good points. How did you see it before we bring in uh, the man you just mentioned a second ago? Yeah, he did. He was a bit uh, wasteful first not Jackson. half. <laughs> That's Caden on. No, um, Caden. He was a bit wasteful, Chaplin, that first half. And like Mike, Mike's probably going to come on and say he give the and he give, did give the ball away. He did, and I can't sit here. I'm a Chaplin fan. I can't really sit here and say that he didn't, but. Look, he improved. And that goal, Martin, we've said it before about Connor. you know, the goals that he scores, it's a good move down the left, good ball in from Davis. He takes that touch. There's an angle. I When I first see it from the, like the, the normal angle, I thought the goalkeeper should have saved it. When there's a, I think it's on the town, um, on the Twitter feed that they posted this morning, from like to the side of the goal, I think I'm doing the goalie a bit of a disservice because I think it, it, was a, it was a decent strike, you know. And he takes it early, doesn't he, Chaplin? You know, he has them ones around the sort of, around the D there, 18 yard box. He'll take that touch and then hit it early. And look, it's in the goal. And that's his second league goal. Richard There's nobody Chandler. better. No, that's where I want to see him playing. That's where I want to see him doing his damage, you know, because he will score. He'll score double figures this season. You Easy. Know. He got, Easy. what was it, 11 last season? I think he'd probably be expecting to get, I think, probably 15 goals this season, Connor Chaplin. Because I think he'll be, he'll play the majority, he won't play every week, but he will play the majority of the games. You know, he took him out the other night against Burton, come back in yesterday. He's got his goal. So I'll give him a seven. I'll give him a seven yesterday, Martin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think when you're always trying to be a progressive footballer, you are going to give the ball away because you're trying to play forward, play between the lines. And that's, you know, a criticism of some of our other players that are, are perhaps more assured on the ball, that they don't try and break the lines. They don't try and be a more progressive footballer. But he's finished outside the, you know, around that 18-yard box. If if you said to me, look, you've got one chance, 18-yard box, your life depends on it. Who, it's for, who do you want it falling to in your current squad? It's always going to be Connor Chaplin because he's at that, that's where he's at. He's most deadly. And that on that touch and hit, one one movement you type You see thing, them practicing brilliant. them before the game, before they go in. You know, they're them little ones that they play yeah. them little one twos, touch, bang. And that's what he does. He is, I think he's lethal around that that penalty box, Martin, and I, I totally agree with you. It's like he doesn't have to think about it. He'll take a touch. He knows where the goal is. Absolutely does. You're and right. he's, hit it. he's hit it there, and the goalkeeper's he's, he's had no chance. And that was a, that was a good good time to score, not long after half-time, and it sort of put the game to bed, didn't it? It was it was, it was was game over when we got that second goal. It, yes, it really was. Jim, low shock was the goalkeeper. It's his stock trade. Uh, we've got a rugby fan in the in the chat. Welcome in. I'm not sure whose name is or their name is, but welcome in. Uh, joining us now, also another welcome in, is Fisherman. Mike, I want to start by just uh, reading the tweet you put out yesterday. If you're thinking Jackson will score a goal, think again and again and again. When I'm thinking again, and he scored a goal. Not always right well, there. He Mike. didn't score a goal. It was a rebound off his shin, wasn't it? He didn't even that came to him. Does he not own his shin then? Look, Is it not look, part of him? No, no, I'm, I, I'm going to come on here and talk about uh, a get in the bin, Jackson. I'm sorry. I, ain't, I don't rate the play. I never have done. It's part of our relegation season. That's Goal it. scorer, End mate. Off. Job done. Right. So, but yeah, Chappers, Chappers, um, first 20 minutes, seven misplaced passes to the opposition. You can't do that at any level. Do you know what I mean? And and then he comes up and then he, and then I don't know, we scored a goal and it's like, Everybody calm down. I mean, you know, questions last night. I was talking to a few town fans that came to work, came in and were working at, and, they, and they, you know, worst, worst roads be poor. Or were you that good? I, for the first twenty minutes, they were poor, and we we didn't hurt them too hard, but we were really good. And probably twenty minutes onwards, I would say, once we scored the goal, um, I thought we were 
by far the better side. We looked comfortable in every department. I think I was at the, um, uh, well, one of the podcasts said that, you know, I think we've just, some player just said, look, from shows we done, I think it was podcast, said, I think we've just played the champions. And look, if we carry on, you know, what, what, what annoys me is, you know, is how we start sometimes. We just start so lethargic. Again, we were slow and, look, you know, I just can't help thinking at some point we are all going to, this, this, this team is going to click in a way and we are really going to hurt some teams. And because, you know, there there is quality across it. You know, Chappers, I'd give him some shit because sometimes he deserves it. But he will score goals. We said this. We said about putting him further forward, didn't we, Rich? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, he will put it in the back of the net. He will score goals. But he's got to stop these Hollywood tricks and stuff like that sometimes, you know, because it, it kind of makes, it kind of diminishes what he's really all about because he is a quality player, but he's got to stop these, you know, like I said, seven misplaced passes in 20 minutes. could have We could have conceded a goal. Against better teams, we probably would have done, you know. So he's got to stop that. Janassian did the same, you know. His ball control was a little bit, oh, dear me, nearly, you know, put Shrewsbury through and... You know, I was a bit annoyed with him as well. So, um, but look, we we won yesterday. Another three points. We're now four games unbeaten. Four game, well, unbeaten all season, but with four games, four winning games. Yep. We're five games in. There's 41 to go. You know, let's not let's. You know, the way Twitter is, and some of the twats on there, you, you've got. You think to myself, Christ alive, when's our open top bus parade? We should we do it now, shall we? Because quite frankly, you know, I just want to get out of this league. You know, if we were top of the championship right now, then yeah, I'd be a lot more hyped up. But we're top of League One and we're desperate to get out of this league. We just want to look. We, you know, fans are a lot happier these days. I get that. But let's keep our feet on the ground, people, you know. Kieran McKenna says, as uh, you know, does things, criticises the players about tech, technical ability and, you know, they're not doing the basics right. And he's and and it's okay, but Fisherman says it. Oh no, the twatters get on board and they give yeah, him a the, bit the of difference shit. is the difference is Mike Kieran McKenna's come from Man United. You've you've coached Brandon under nines. See, that's where you're wrong. You see, you've got your facts all wrong. I've never coached Brandon under nines. <laughs> it was Haverhill. Well, and even now, I've never coached Haverhill either. So you know, it was born in '87 from under 14s, 15s, and 16s. Brandings was under 14s and 16, 15. So at the end of the day is... Are you a journeyman you know, coach? I don't care where I come from. I'm entitled, listen, no, I'm entitled to opinion. I get fucked off when people keep going on about that. Because at the end of the day is, that's disrespectful, Rich. Do you know what I mean? You have an opinion, but I don't sit there and throw your coaching or your referee stuff at you, do I? No, because you can't, because we no, all do it for him. No, take, this no, guy can't control it again to, to save his life. take it to a, two, a new low. There's no need for it. Do you know what I mean? The end of the day is I'm entitled to an opinion. I've been a town fan since well before you, Rich. You know, well, and I'm not, older. That's I'm why not you're older. Don't mean you're right, though, Mike. Gonna, no, I'm not going to stand here and take it. Where's Cameron Humphreys then? Where's Cameron Humphreys? Your I golden want, boy. I don't well, yeah, but he's not know. played, has he? Which you can't take. You can't uh, play a basic player on his ability to provide a to provide he's not good uh, enough. That's that's he's not playing. playing. He's not good enough, Mike. Clearly, your opinion, Richard. Oh. And clearly, other people, no, I'm having it. You other people have said exactly the same. Cam Brownbridge is more than capable of playing this league. You Why can is he have not this. Why is he not I'm, I'm a Chappers fan and I like licking his ass. What's wrong with that? Why is he not playing then, Cameron Humphreys? I don't know. Ask Kieran McKenna. Why don't you? you you're the one who's in point. the know, 8% in the know. Why don't you go and ask him? <laughs> <laughs> Because he doesn't think he's good enough. And if he was good enough, he'd be no. playing instead of you Chappers. Don't know, you don't know that. You don't know what's going on in training. You have no idea what's going on in training. But you only see enough, what's going on on the pitch. The end of the, no, listen, the end of the day is, right, we are top of the league. Yeah, there you go, Lee Anderson. We right. deserve People it. in glass houses, Mike, you throw more rubbish at others. So, oh, don't up. give me that crap. No, you, you, you do. Look, you, you, that's always the same old story. Fisherman's badges, coaching badges. At least I've got coaching badges, which a lot of people don't have. I know you do, and I respect that. But I don't sit there and throw them at you, do I? Why would you let him? Have you, you got coaching him? badges, Rich? Yes. Thank Ooh, you very how many, much. How many I know got? he's got coaching badges, but I don't <laughs> sit there and diminish his coaching badges just because he's because he I don't agree with his opinion. Did you get out, did you get out of bed wrong side this morning? I no, think I he's had his weight a bit. Can we just talk about it. the fact that 
Rich attended a 50th wedding birthday last, last night in a town kit. Like, not as many... There's nothing wrong with that. Better than wearing no, a wedding. Like. Did you say a wedding? Oh, 50th wedding birthday, I said. Uh, wedding birthday. I did say wedding. I said it twice now. I meant a 50th birthday party <laughs> in a town kit. I thought, I thought that was rather brave. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get away with it. I wouldn't Shirt. get away with it. I yeah, mean... but I'm not under the thumb, not you. Well, that's, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Up. That's true. <laughs> Mike, would you get away with it? Would your missus allow you to attend a 50th in a, in a town shirt? No. Yeah, I don't think she'd care, to be brutally honest. <laughs> she just wouldn't want you there with her. She just, she oh, he's got to come. Yeah. <laughs> she, probably, she probably wouldn't want me to go full stop. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> look, I'm, look, you know, the end of the day is, you know, oh, dear, I don't know. But, yeah, no, look, you know, I'm, I'm, of course I'm happy that we are top of the league right now. Of course I'm happy that we are, you know, we're, we're four games unbeaten and stuff, you know, four games, four winning games, I should say, in a row. You know, but let's let's just keep our feet on the ground. You know, for Christ's sake, let's not get carried away. We've still got forty-one games to go, and we, you know we haven't exactly played world beaters. Although saying that, last season we would have probably lost to this, maybe lost or drew to some of them. Can you put Sage's? Can you put Sage's comment up? There? I can. Yeah, Sage has just. Uh, I've got a com. I've got a community sports leader award certificate. There you go, Sage. There we are. <laughs> no, you see, you see, no disrespects, right? Twenty-five minutes. Got that, good luck. Good luck to him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-five minutes with me, Batch. That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mike, before I let you go, because I've got to be waiting. Who's your man of the match yesterday? Oh, Lee Evans. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was brilliant yesterday. He really did. Yeah, I thought he was probably the most consistent out of all. Um, mm -hmm. Morsey again, another, another, another seven plus. For me, KVY, I want to give a good shout out to him because uh, he got himself in a position yesterday, which was a stonewall penalty. The ref bottled it. There's no two ways about that. And I thought he played well again. I thought he was a great backup to Burns. And well, it's like we haven't really missed Burns, really, isn't it? You know, but we do. I'm not saying, I'd, for Christ, anybody start getting on the old fisherman's case because of, oh, suddenly he hates Burns. No, it's not. Look, we've got. Uh, you know, so um, Evans misplaced more more, more passes, passes than Evans. Evans. I think Matt's uh, been, <laughs> he's been on the gym this morning. Matt's yeah, well, you, has. twice. It's twice you said stuff like that. But so yeah. Then Chaplin, yeah. he means he said. And then Chaplin. No, he didn't. No, at all. Not at all. Um, Evans <laughs> Evans was probably the probably man of the match. I thought he, you know, he ran ran the midfield a little bit yesterday. Defensively right. again, what did we have to do? Absolutely nothing except recover the ball back that we've given it away, as, as you've expertly detailed. So, you know, easy. Fifth gear. Enjoy your fishing. You were supposed to be with us Wednesday, but you've binned me off for a fishing expedition. Is that right? Well, I'm getting told I should do more fishing. So even my wife is saying I should do oh, more The viewers fishing. will be delighted. The what? <laughs> the viewers? Yeah. Not bothered. Not bothered. I'm Not bothered. Joking. You know it. Mike, no, go, you go and have a sit. You, you've, you've hurt my feelings. Go and have a sit down, look at your coaching badges and reflect upon a great career that you've probably had. Look oh, after absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. right. Look after yourself. We love you, man. <laughs> Come All on, the best. you boys. All the best. Macaulay Bowie, you've had all right. Now you've got that's that's some that's some person to follow, but do try and do it, please. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. <laughs> that was thoroughly to entertaining to watch. <laughs> It went well. It's always entertaining here at Talking Town Towers. What is your view on your football club this this morning? Top of the table. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I I never thought we'd go to Shrewsbury and score three. Wow. But no. uh, glad we've come away with a three 0 win, and I can't see us uh, losing a game in the next four. Maybe Cambridge. Um, and it's all going to be rosy from now on. Um, just looking at the fixtures just now. I mean, say uh, September. October and December have all got tricky fixtures in. So we'll you know we'll see where we are by Christmas time. Um but at the moment it's bloody wonderful to see town top of the table. Can't remember the last time. Well, I can't remember the last time we were top of the table, but how long has it been, Rich, since we actually won a divisional title? Well, 91, 92. 30 years. Way too long for a club of this nature. That was a high division, though. Yes, but, he's, but 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 the point, the overriding point that 
you're making there is absolutely right. That is far too too long of any type of title wear. Um, and obviously, the last sort of silverware was the playoff final in, in, in 2000. So even 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 then, if you use that as your base for a point there, again, it's a well-made one. It's too long. It's 20 odd years. It's it's getting on. It's ridiculous. Um, you mentioned the first defeat. Obviously, the fixtures are coming up thick and fast uh, now, and, and it really starts to get a little bit more serious as you as you approach the 10 game mark. There are your fixtures: Barnsley, Stanley, Cambridge, Bristol Rovers, and then Sheffield Wednesday. You've said. Cambridge. What about Cambridge particularly, before I ask which where our first defeat may come, if in that group, what about Cambridge for you gives you an, un, an uneasy we might get beat there? I just think, when I think of Cambridge last season, I just think that they could be our bogey team this season. Yeah, obviously, Mark Bonner's got his team playing really well. They're a good, well-drilled football side. So, yeah. it's a little bit of truth in that, Rich. Cambridge were a little bit of kryptonite. To town last year. Yeah, but it's it's a lot like we've said before, and I think Kieran referenced it yesterday. We've we've done a lot of things that we didn't do last season, Martin. Already, you know, we've beaten a promoted team, MK Dons, finished third. We drew with them twice. We've beaten them. Mm-hmm. We won at Burton, who we lost to last season. We've gone to Shrewsbury, we drew with them, we won. So it, look, Cambridge are going to come down in a couple of weeks' time. They're going to bring like a couple of thousand. It'll be their cup final. It'll be totally yeah. different than it was last season. You know, I think we're a totally different animal. Um, I think Accrington is going to be a tough game, but we we can't get looking too far ahead. This game, that game, that game. All we can do, Martin, is look at the next game, which is Barnsley at home on Saturday. That's all we can look at at the minute. Barnsley. And I think that'll be a tough game. They lost 3-0 at home yesterday to Wickham. Uh, certain Mr Norwood's coming back, who I couldn't really give a toss about because he's he's got... <laughs> If he's that 20 goal a season striker, he's been playing every game, not off the mark yet. So all they've got to do this week is prepare right, train right, you know, and I think that there'll be two or three changes. I'll be I'll be surprised, Martin, if Kieran picks the same team again mm-hmm. on Saturday. I think it if pe- pe- some people might think, oh, why is he changing it again? But I think we'll have to get used to that throughout this season. The different games he's going to use different players. You know, he'll he'll analyze it. I think. Kieran's getting a lot of love, which obviously he deserves. But let's not forget about his backroom staff. Martin. You know, Martin Pert, you know, he's a massive part to play. Rennie Gilmartin, you know, Sam Williams, all of them, Martin. This mm-hmm. is a team effort at the minute that we're doing. So long may it continue. But Barnsley Saturday, let's just focus on that game first and get the three points there and then look ahead to the next one after that. Rich mentions McKenna Love there uh, and the changes. Were you surprised, first of all, to see John Jules come into the side, Macaulay Bowie? I'm, I'm going to use that name all, all, all the time, <laughs> Macaulay Bowie. Were you, were you surprised to see him come into the side, first of all, before you obviously saw the game? Were you, was that a surprising addition? No, no, not for me. And actual fact, I've just, I've just watched the highlights again just now in the last few minutes. And, you know, uh, TJJ took the ball by absolute horns with his goal. You know, nicking the ball off that defender when he when he had his back to goal was you know was the sort of number nine that we really need, and I think that um, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts against Barnsley. You say he may may not, obviously, with the rotation that McKenna's going to utilise this season. But um, yeah, I think uh, you know from the Burton game, um, I want I wanted to see TJJ start, and uh, he took his goal exceptionally well. Um, how yesterday. how do you see his all round play? Obviously, you, you say he took the goal really well, and he and he did. How 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 was his all round play? It, was it enough to maybe convince you? Um, you know, when Jem asked the question, "Do we need another striker?" Was it enough to convince you actually? If if we keep Caden, if we keep TJJ, if we've got Chaplin, if we've got uh, Ladapa, we maybe don't. Was it enough for that, or how did you see it? I think it's strange this one because I think it's too early to say. I think what's probably going to happen is that. You know, if we don't bring in another attacking-minded player before September, which, you know, could be a possibility. Uh, look, it might look like that McKenna may not bring in another strike if he thinks that TJJ can score the goals that, you know, would, yeah. you know, would kind of take some pressure off um, Ladapo. I do, I do think that Ladapo will get the goals. I think the goals will come. It's just we just don't know when. And um, but I mean, say. Watching TJJ in preseason, I thought this is a player. There's a real spark about this this guy that can score goals at this level, and I, I think that he'll do that. I think that he'll comfortably get double figures for us this season. 
if he gets yeah. minutes. <clears throat> I, I would love him to. I mean, currently, you know, absolutely. Who was your man of the match before we bring in uh, Twister Chandler? Sadly, I didn't actually watch the game because I was actually out at a social do in the How town centre. How dare you have a social <laughs> life? Do you not know the football season going on? Yes. <laughs> I'm a season ticket holder, as you know, Gov. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. How was your social soiree? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, enjoyed it. <laughs> it wasn't as good as the result of the football yesterday, but still enjoyed it. Good man. Good man. Um, will you be at the Stir Ralph on Barnsley? Absolutely. You'll see me then. Good man, looking forward. Oh, to and just one more, one more thing, Rich. I know, I know what it feels like to referee because I was a referee for eight years, um, refereeing in the SIL and, and the Regions League and, and all Sunday morning games as well. So I know, I saw what it, I know what it takes. It's a tough gig at times. It is if your name is Richard because he can't control the game to save his life. But we love you. Look after yourself. See it, Sir Ralph. Don't shake your head at me, Rich. You know you can't control the game. Oh, Every game you referee, you referee it. I've done an under 18s game, St. Ives versus Berry, under 18s. And how many got arrested? No arrests. And I was. <laughs> so my mate's son played for Berry, who I work with, and he was surprised that I could keep up with him at 46. Although the first 10, 15 minutes, it was rapid, and I thought I was going to keel over. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I can't move myself, but um, <laughs> that's quite good. I like that. Uh, Stephen Perry McKenna said, What you offered, he drops deep where Ladapo doesn't. Uh, we said that last night on the match reaction show that the, he was getting to the ball first before uh, the Shrewsbury defenders. So, you know, he's, he's, he's agreeing with yourself. It plays into what you said about identifying no, individual um, team you're errors. You're reminding me of that goal yesterday. I'm not saying he's going to be anywhere near the player. It reminded me of Thierry Henry for Arsenal when he glided glided through that defence, sent Shea Dunkley to the shops, didn't he? Sent him to the shops, little he face. Sent, he might have sent him to another city, but it doesn't matter, passed, mate. That... Passed it into the corner. Thierry Henry? Yeah, that's what it reminded me. I'm not saying he's going to be anywhere near the player, but like the run. So, you know, he just you know... glided past them. Thank you very much. I was really impressed with him yesterday. And I, I like him for a lone player. The other night when he came on at Burton, he was getting the crowd going. And, and Colin said to me, you know, some of these loan players come, they know you, you don't know how much they're sort of buy into it. But he he definitely does. Does he start on Saturday? Interesting, isn't it? He's got that goal. You know, it'd be, it'd be pretty harsh now if Kieran says to Freddie, right, Freddie, you're back in and Torres, you're on the bench. But whatever next. Who knows? Harlan's the next Marco, Marco Holster. Whatever next, I don't know. Saj, I, I feel we need a set-piece specialist as someone who can cut in top bins. Well, Lee Anderson says us... it reminds me of John Mons versus Brazil. You're too young to remember that. I haven't got a clue. what that. Just Football didn't exist before 92. Well, obviously. We all know that. Uh, right, Mr Chandler, welcome in. My first question to you is, do you have any badges? I've got a couple of badges. I've got a Blue Peter badge. I've got a 50-year-old birthday badge. That I got. I've actually got some coaching badges as well, but they mean nothing because it was kids' football. It doesn't mean nothing. Oh, Christ, oh, don't fight him. He'll oh, come oh, back. He'll... The chat has just fallen <laughs> off his chair. He'll come <laughs> back. He'll come back. Don't don't say it like that. Oh, my Lord. How, in care. your expert opinion, with your coaching manual on the desk, with you feeding you the information, how did you see yesterday's absolute domination of? Hang on, wait a minute. Before we go, before we ask that question, Blue Peter badge. How did you get a Blue Peter badge? I, always I was thought... lying about the Blue Peter badge. It's the one oh. badge that I mentioned just then I haven't got. But you it's... I've never met anybody who's got one. Like, nah. literally, I won't even buy one either. Oh, Jim will fix it. Oh, maybe we should mention nah. it. <laughs> Park that over there somewhere, Richard. Different different conversation. Uh, right, Mr Chandler, how did you see yesterday's 3-0 uh, domination? Um, well, I had to kind of sneakily listen slash watch a bit because I was you just also got at back some... from Frankfurt. Don't, 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 I was, don't pretend. I, I was at some kind of social thing in my Ipswich shirt. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I, I was at I was at a care home summer party for my in-laws. Um so I was the only one in an Ipswich shirt <laughs> and one of the only people below the age of 80 but I was enjoying it. <laughs> I would imagine um, you probably were. I, I, I would have put. I would, I would have got the whole group round the tables and a decent afternoon entertainment for them all. You know. Yeah. Um, I think it's. I think it was fantastic. We've ch made changes, some of which he had to make because obviously Wes was out. Um, but last season we couldn't buy a point without Wes Burns playing. This season we're a completely different animal, and any player that he puts in, I've got every faith we'll get the result. I, yeah. I don't. I'm ne I've not got any doubt. I said before the game yesterday, I thought we'd win three-one. 
we won way more comfortably than that because we didn't look like letting one in. So, Absolutely, Richard. And I'm just writing down a name here, Sam Morsey, because obviously this is a, a conversation we've been having since the, the start of the campaign. Uh, a game we didn't score in yesterday. Oh, it had a, bet nearly. <laughs> oh, nearly's, not, nearly's not cutting it, though, is it, at the minute? I know, but you've already said... You've already said, Cruncher, that you think Chaffers is going to get 15. You've already also, I think, said TJJ could get 10. I didn't actually so know. I, didn't, I, did, I don't know. You were, where you were nodding, you were nodding your head Harnes. when he I said Marcus that. Harnes. Harnes will get double figures. I'm still mm. waiting. I'm still waiting for the first goal of the 10 from Wolfenden. <laughs> Aren't we all? I, to, be honest, to be honest, if seven players get 10 goals, I don't care whether Wolfie gets <laughs> No, yeah, absolutely, right. yeah, absolutely. Are you surprised, Richard, actually, on that? That Because I, I was with you when you said Luke Wolfenden was going to score 10 goals because I had more faith that we would be more analytically driven in our set-piece creation, but then have a better delivery of set-piece. We had it once, but since then, we've gone back to basically hitting the first man or hitting the bloke in rows of the West stand or East stand, whichever stand is opposite the corner. The delivery is not good enough for a player like Wolfenden or Edmondson, is it? It's really poor That's still. It. It is poor, and I think there's a few people that have said that they'd rather have a decent set pace piece taking player come in than necessarily a number nine. And I kind of feel like that's the only player we're missing. I think Chappers is probably the best of a bad lot on asset piece delivery at the moment, but that's based on him hitting mm. some players that he's intending to hit rather than. Some of the Evans ones, which unfortunately Evans has been fantastic this season, apart from his set pieces. Mm. Um, I think there was one yesterday where it was a little bit more like analytical and it was a diving header. I think that might have been one of the defenders. I couldn't see who on the highlights Evans. who it was. Yeah, Evans. It was Evans, was it? Yeah, but yeah. that but that seemed like it was a bit more of a training ground routine because it wasn't just a lofted into the box. It was a specific point and I thought we'd do more of that kind of stuff like we did a, in the goal that he did score from a set piece it maybe that's coming but maybe we don't need it two goals three goals a game every game do you need to score from set pieces then well no but there will be a time rich when uh crunch when 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 your your luck is 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 you know a short wicket look at Oxford last year we should have won that yeah. game they pop up with, with a set piece I've just it's... written down four names Chaplin Davis KBY TJ down the pitch yesterday you're telling me not not my left back what? my one million pound what? left back can't deliver a corner on a regular basis is better as more or more than There's Lee a couple Evans. of good comments in here though rich if you look uh, Jamie puts Three percent of corners lead to goals. Stop putting so much weight on it. They're a cherry on top. And then I, I, I tend to agree with Carl that we're not aggressive enough sometimes at attacking these balls. Just, just sometimes, Martin, hang that ball up. That was all the Oxford. That was all Oxford done. That was all Oxford done. That wasn't. That was not a goal off the training ground. You know, that was just a player who wanted to head that ball. That was Burgess. He got in front of that game, didn't he? It was. Yeah. He wanted absolutely. to win that more. Than he did, and sometimes that's all you need to do. You want to win it more than whoever's marking you. It doesn't Rich, have to be like a corner off the training ground. Put it in an area and just attack that ball. And I think that's really important, Richard. That, you know, yeah, Jamie's absolutely bang on. Jamie's a coach in his own right. Uh, I'll, I'll let everybody know he's got his coaching badges. I do know Jamie, um, but it, it's not necessarily the scoring of the goals. Everyone loves that, of course. But it's, it's looking dangerous. It's getting a corner like we used to with Darren Curry and thinking, or oh, a free kick, right? Get on the edge of your seat Lee, because Lee something's going to happen Lee here. in the chat is bang on. We don't have the players to attack the ball. I said the other Nonsense. night, Mark. The defenders, the defenders we've got, that, that, going back to the Burton game, the first three balls that come into our box from then, they won the header. Now, Wolfenden and Edmondson, are they great in the air? Are they great in the air? I don't think they are. That's Richard Keogh's job when he comes in. Cameron Burgess is probably the best header of the ball we've got. And he played yesterday, did he not? Yeah, he did. Richard, over to you. Are we aggressive enough? Are we, you know, what, what do you I think, think? I think we're right. I think we're, I, th I think our defenders need, and our midfielders need to be more aggressive attacking yeah. and defending corners. But, but the other factor we're not really utilising is the fact that we've got the best keeper in the division. Every other team haven't, and we should be putting them under pressure from corners, put them right on their heads, so make them have to deal with the cross. And we don't do that. Mm. And there was actually True. one in the MK game that nearly went in because the keeper couldn't deal with it. 
And it wasn't even a great corner, but it nearly went in because it nearly got in at the far post. Because and there was the two yesterday. It away. There was two yesterday for, for, for Shrewsbury where Walton was looking a little bit Andy Marshall-esque and he's, and he's flapping away at it because you can't come and collect the ball cleanly and they're, and they're corralled in that area. And that's, you're actually spot on there, Richard. That's a really good, really good point. We've got to just do better. Perhaps not the goals like Jamie says, but do better at looking like we're going to do something. And Davis' delivery is they've got to utilise that because clearly on the pitch, he could, div- he could deliver. I think he's an outstanding sign-in. I know it's early days, but I think he really is. When we had Mick, Rich and Martin, and the season we got in the playoffs and Tommy Smith, Luke Chambers, Christoph Barra scored, they must have scored double figures between them, you know. Did we have someone who was amazing on set pieces? No, we didn't. We just put the ball in an area. Christoph Barra, mine, would go and win that header. He would attack the ball. So would Tommy Smith. But that's the problem, that, Rich. You in, ain't putting it in the area for a for a loop well, to suddenly have a bit of a great like the bloke, the steward on the other side of the pitch picking the ball up. That's not an that doesn't matter if he's aggressive or not because the ball's gone too long. Or if you're hitting the first man, Richard, doesn't matter if you've Christoph Berrer in the middle. It's hitting the first man shin pads. It's it, it's just the, the delivery, as much as Lee Evans is Rich's best mate now, is not good enough and is probably Lee Evans' worst part of his game, which is a great thing to have because there's many other aspects he could have been not performing at, but the, the set piece delivery is is one for me. Do you th- do you think Richard Keogh is better at attacking a ball? Because I suspect he probably oh, I don't is. Because no. he's a grizzled old man of a footballer, isn't he? He's gonna <laughs> come in from someone who's even older than him, but you know what I mean. Has he got badges? <laughs> That's, I reckon he might have, you know. <laughs> just, you know it's, it's, all, it's all about the badges, mate. You're going to upset Mike. You're going to upset Mike. He's moaning in the chat that people are being disrespectful. <laughs> this, this, no, it's, it's actually born out of respect and love. I think he needs to... What the? What was that in front of your camera, Rich? You all right? A fly. There was a fly. <laughs> if only had a fly. Uh, Richard, are you going to be at the home game next week? Absolutely. Are you going to come back and say hello? Of course. Good man. We I'll love even say that. hello to Mike, even though he hates me. Oh, he well, won't be there. there. He's done his three games this season. Hey, <laughs> uh, yeah, be fair, he's done more than Matty Phillips has done. Well, very true. Yeah, yeah but so. Phillips has been on holidays for yeah, well, forever. Not forever. Not forever. <laughs> when you got the when you got the mogul change, you, you live on holiday, don't you? That that, that that's the issue. Uh, I Richard, about the on the plane he was, Richie, other night. <laughs> well, then come well, on. There you when go. Flying back from Scotland. So when he said he flew Ryanair, I thought it'd be more of a British Airways, you know. Uh, or, you oh know. yeah, but I bet he paid for luggage. And a seat, and all the extras. I bet he didn't. He probably wore all his clothes in one go, no matter. Turned up four pairs of shoes. Right, Richard, I'm going to let you go. Look after yourself, and thank you for coming on the show today. Cheers, guys. We appreciate you. Look after yourself. Quick word from one of our partners, and then we've got the goat who was there. He's living in Cloud Cuckoo, um, on Cloud9. Uh, Ipswich Buses, your local bus company. Don't get stuck in traffic. Ditch the car. Go green. Go contactless. Go Ipswich buses. Fares available from £2.20 return, a fantastic price and a fantastic service. Ipswich buses, proud to partner with Talking Town. Absolutely, and don't forget, support your local bus company. Use it or you will lose it. Come on, go contact us across routes. We have got, I saw an article about that in the paper, so I thought I'd mention it. Uh, Emerson says, I just joined. What's the issue of our defence? Absolutely um, zero. It's about aggressiveness on corners, aren't we? Center we off. Are. We are. Don't want to start bad rumours that we're, we're trying to be negative when we're top of the table. It's not, not. good. It's not a good look. Um, but I do remember, actually, before I've been calling it, about the Lambert run and, and this run, doing some so, some shows with Neil and Rob, and, and the conversations were, we're winning games, but we're not winning convincingly. We're looking dodgy. Can we? Is it? A, is it a case of a of you winning bad when you're not playing well, which is a good sign, or is it a case of we're winning but we're actually quite dog shit? In the end, it proved out <laughs> we're actually quite dog. <laughs> yeah, it caught up with us in the end, didn't it? It did a little bit, yeah. Um, and I look at that run. Uh, the, we, we're looking great, and suddenly going to get to kind of Doncaster and get absolutely walloped four one. Yeah, and I think was it Akron and on the telly they done us over, didn't they? Yeah, they did us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. Things are different this time, aren't they, Colin? Martin, how are you? Uh, forget how I am, my man. I want to know how you are. How high in the clouds are you? Look, got 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 a little bit of a grilling. Got a little bit of a grilling from the oldest boy. Got, 
on a on a text he's saying about you know just keep it down a little bit you know and like I said before Rich and Ian keep me on a keep me on a keel and uh, but no one look, no wonder you no wonder I mean that they're, they're there to keep you even in keel you're in trouble mate <laughs> but 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 look we've we've got to enjoy this man we've absolutely got to enjoy it and um, Rich Gondra agrees with that but we have to. I, I do agree we have to keep a lid on this to a certain extent. But within football, and I remember back in the day, you know, like when we were chasing lead titles and that, and, you know, we used to enjoy it then. Um, obviously, we had the odd defeat. But, you know, there, there's always, like even when we was top of the tree, there's always that game. I didn't say this to Rich this morning. It's always that game, and it was only the odd game in them days that really kicked you where we, you didn't want it. My dad used to always say, yeah, just be a bit careful because that hopefully it won't come, but it probably will. And, um, yeah, you know, most of the time it did. You know, it was always that kick, you know, where, like when we went to Middlesbrough and lost, you know, and I thought, I, look, we won at Villa, and I thought the title was in the bag. But that big kick in the between the legs came at Ayrson Park. And, you know, so, but but you have to enjoy the great times, you know, because it's, I, like I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, and I, I, the risk of sounding boring. I love, I was there yesterday, I was with Matt's children. I love seeing all the young people, you know, even people 30 or less are seen absolutely zilch. And, for Rich's children, for everybody's children, Matt Stanard's children, everybody's children I love and I've got to know and everything, it's coming. It's coming. We've got to enjoy it. That, that, those smiles on those on Rich's children the other night, on Matt Stanard's boys yesterday, it's beautiful. <laughs> And it's coming. But we have to really... Hey, we can't, we can't be crying after five games, Connor. We can cry after no. 45 games when we've won the league. No, but I'm, I'm, thinking about, I'm thinking about how much we've got our club back for these young fans. And, I, and it really, really tears at my heart because I've, I've seen everything apart from winning the league. And by God, I got pretty damn close to that on three or four occasions. But it's coming. And I'll tell you, like I said on Alex's yesterday, I'll tell you, we get up at, get up out of this stinking league. And I'll tell you, I honestly think, I don't, I don't know what the plans are, but I would only love to presume that the plans are as soon as we get back in the championship, and hopefully that's, a, you know, in May at the end of this season. You know, we, we'll maybe even go for it even more because we all know Martin and Rich. You're you're not silly people whatsoever. And Mike and everybody else, we all know where we need and want to be. And those owners especially, you know, because what well, like we've spoken about on the show before, before long, you know, in the next however long, you know, the, the owners and, and, and the pension fund, that they're going to want some, you know, kind of return. And um, so we all know where, you know, that return is going to come from. You know, it'll come more, more obviously, in the championship. But it'll come even more, Martin and Rich, in the Premier League. And I'll tell you what, like, how everything is coming together and... Um, I don't think I said it the other night. I also would like to say what a massive, massive thank you to George Edmondson and Chaplin. Because I'll tell you what, what George and um, and Chaplin did the other day was nothing short of absolutely fantastic for those disabled people. And um, the club is just coming together just so, so much. And um, long may it continue. And, um, you know, like I said on Alex's channel yesterday, Peter Borough, Sheffield Wednesday. 
you know, Bolton Derby. Watch Where's out because we're not we're we're not we're not messing about. We're not messing about. We're not messing about mm. as players. We're not messing about as a club. We're not messing about as supporters. Okay, like I said the other day, guys, keep pulling on that rope. Mark Ashton can get on the back of it if he wants. Because I'm sure he'd take his jacket off and get on the back of that rope and start tugging. <laughs> I, 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 I tell you, we're all in this together. I, I, I'll probably finish up with a job at the club. Mark will probably finish up giving me a job, hopefully. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> no, no, seriously, we've all... I, I totally agree with Mr Ashton. Mr Ashton, we've got to all pull in the same direction. We are. And I'll tell you what also what I said to Rich this morning. I'll tell you what, I I don't say to you know, a lot of people say things of oh, just because somebody else didn't go. Now I didn't say that at all to Rich this morning, but I, what I said to Rich this morning, we all we was there together on Tuesday night and it was jumping. It was beautiful. But I'll tell you what, it was like that again yesterday. And I think the next one's at Akron. And that won't be quite so good because me and Rich know no roof on top and it isn't quite the same. But I'll tell you what, you wait till we go to Sheffield Wednesday. You wait till me and Rich are at Hillsborough. That's uh, going to well, be... I anyone standing there calling. Care, careful if he's jumping. You know, his ham and pickle rolls might pop out. <laughs> well, well, well uh, ham and pickle. That's the thing. Yeah. Again, not for me. But we go to, we go to Wednesday, actually, Colin. What? In four league games time, yeah, yeah. you know that's not going to be long between no, no. you know, and, and the games between then are are Bristol Rovers, which you know you would expect to win at home. Came three the next four home, three out of the next four home. Go. You should expect to go into Wednesday with some decent form. Should that could be, be a yeah. real. That should be on Sky. That to be honest with you, because that that's that's a really tasty, in you know, traditional EFL. Well, that'll be a test here. that game, and then Plymouth. We've got two very tough away games there, so. Mm. But I think we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves by looking at Sheffield Wednesday already when we've we've got Barnsley coming up, Colin. I've said to you, we take it. I, 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 look, I do. Maybe as fans, we do we can get carried away, right? Kieran McKenna won't be looking anywhere apart from Barnsley on Saturday at Portman Road. Maybe as fans, we can start looking at this game, that game. But any talk of championship, any talk of Premier League, we are getting way ahead of ourselves here. We've achieved absolutely zero. And we've been here before and we had egg in our faces. Well, that might be the case, but if we can get 100 likes in this next five minutes, I will show the league table. We are on 73. Get it climbing. There's over 100, 166 people on YouTube alone watching. That's like, come on, let's get that like button and I'll show that league table. Colin, you were in the stands yesterday. You probably didn't sit for 90. Who was your man of the match? Uh, <clears throat> like, like, I said yesterday, like I said yesterday, um, there was a there was a there was a lot of eights. I, I, I would I wouldn't even really. I, it was a great team performance yesterday. I haven't been privy to what like you know the angling angling are going to give like people tomorrow and all stuff like that. Um, but I would be very, very surprised <clears throat> if anybody got less than an eight. Uh, there was, yes. there were sevens. There was a lot of sevens. Was there? Right, okay, that's fine. Yeah. But for me, that was a great team performance. Yeah, I mean, maybe yeah, maybe one or two sevens, but a lot of eights. So, uh, man of the match. It, I, I give it a joint. I give it a joint. Two, two nines. Nine for John Jules and nine for uh, Leif Davis. So I, I've got to speak about Leif Davis because take it away. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people were a, a little bit wary about the, the transfer fee and a bit. Um, started off very, um, very shaky, if you like. Obviously, as his debut, just come back from Australia. Um, but I'll tell you what, he's he's really, really starting to impress me. I'll tell you what I would one bloke I would like to give a shout out to is Greg Lee because that lad, every time he comes off a bench or every time he started like he did the other night, if he's listening to this, which he might be, he might he might not. But if he is, you know, whenever you come on or whenever you play, you know, great credit to you because I'll tell you what, that lad 
we're, we're blessed with those two lads on that left hand side. Uh, it's been it's been a problem for us. We all know that. It's been a problem for us for quite a while now. You know, since the likes of Aaron Cresswell and what have you. Um, but Kieran has got that. So, and also another thing I'd like to say about yesterday is I've always said about how cool uh, what his persona's like. I did know it. So I, I watch Kieran a lot on the side. I love watching him. Two two things yesterday. One it was the first time I ever seen him get any kind of any 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 kind of animation within him, really? and it, it was quite right. One was obviously when, when they should have had the penalty, but more so just after half time when they were there was a few tackles raining in, and Martin Pert was standing with him, which he doesn't normally, and 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 and, and Kieran, you know, was not having a go, but just. Like having a little pointy word to the fourth official. Oi, hold on, what's going on here? Because I'll tell you what, there could have been a serious injury there. You know, we was playing it round people and stuff. And, and to be honest, they weren't the racers at that particular time. And we all know if you've played a game, if people are starting to, you know, pass it round you and you're doing all the running, you start like, yeah, oh, bugger this, you know, I'm going to put a tackle in in a minute. And um, yeah. But um, yeah, Martin Pert, you know, he he he, um, he stood there, and I, I think maybe just a little, maybe a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a calming influence. But I agree with what Rich said earlier. I'll tell you what, we've got some really, really good people in in good places now. We've got round pegs in round holes all over the place, and our club is just totally and utterly different than it was even 12, 15, 18 months ago. Absolutely. It's in such a good place, uh, Martin and Rich. Absolutely. And, 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 I, I, and, and again, I, I, like all of us, I can't wait for Saturdays again. You know, we just can't wait for the games to come round. Can we, Martin? No, abso- abs- absolutely not. Um, you're absolutely right and in, in your assessment and, and, and your reflections. And actually... You're very much excited and looking forwards, but genuine and, and feet on the ground still, which I, I, I am surprised about. I thought when I when I had you come on the show, I thought you'd be up in the clouds planning your yeah, trip to Ashton. Yeah, he's had the pep talk. Don't worry. But Colin, we always we always love hearing from you, Colin. So much so that Matt Stan at eight ninety nine goat appreciation. We love the goat. Thank you very much, Matt Stan, for the donation, and thank you very I, much for the I, goat. I will go on record as saying. I am not coming off the first or second pedestal. I'm not coming off it at all. What is it, though? Is it first or is it second, Colin? It can't be both. Doesn't matter. We'll be having... There's going to be a little space. Oh, by the way, Norwich, that's what something you've never done, apart from a milk jug, remember? Right? There's going to be a little space somewhere. Have you ever been in the Ipswich Trophy? Norwich fans, a lot, lot of them in ours. A lot of them in ours. Okay? You know... Might be a little bit ancient, but a lot of them in the cabinet. But I think they're going to probably make a little bit of a space ready for the first division trophy. Absolutely. Colin, we absolutely love you. Look after love yourself. You. Stay well. I will always appreciate hearing from the, the GOAT. Lots there to unpack, as there is this evening at 9pm for you and your lot, Rich. Oh. It, 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 ain't, it didn't go to plan. Yeah, we've got uh, back tonight, me and... Uh, there's only three of us tonight, myself, Rob and Neil. I'm not sure where Brandon's going. He said he's going to the airport tomorrow. I'm sure he's been on holiday already. I can't I can't think he's going Brandon's to Brandon's got more yeah, on his nickname. Disappointing defeat for England. Disappointing against South Africa, but it's one game. We will pick it yeah. apart tonight. So if you're around tonight, you like your cricket, come and have a, have a look, have a watch, get involved. Colin will be back. He gets involved in the chat. If you don't like cricket and you... Want something to watch? There's not a lot on the telly at nine. Come and watch us. Come on. Absolutely. Matt's buzzing to go off to Lords for the hundreds. Uh, and then we're back tomorrow night, 8 30. Joining me will be uh, Big Fish Tom James and Ben Milk Trey Adams. Uh, oh, lots... what's he going to make of his main man scoring? Uh, Caden Jackson. What perfect timing. Now. You can't sometimes plan these things. He did text me. I can't remember what he texted me yesterday about five o'clock. He texted something funny when Caden scored. He, yeah, he did text, 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 yeah, text me probably something very similar. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. Before I go, I did say 100 likes and I would show uh, the Sky... Is it Sky Bet still? Sky Bet League One yeah. table. 
Um, you never know these days. We have got 100 likes out of 178 watches. So 78 of you, what are you doing with your lives? Hit the like button, become a YouTube member, join the Discord, and have your lives rocked, rolled. Discord's great. Discord is fantastic. See, if he, if this man here, who is a, who is the Twitter king, gets, I gets like, an endorphin like hit. Course, yeah. When when we worked out how it how it works, and Martin and myself couldn't, we couldn't work out how to get out of it at the end, could we? No, we couldn't. No, no, you no, got no. the phone call. You just have to hang up. You do. You, but do, no, you do. It's brilliant. You do. If you're not a member, come on, four ninety nine. Four ninety nine is bargain. Oh. Yeah, absolute bargain. Oh, and um. There, as as which just as just expertly said there, there is a TT after show party where you can just listen, you can get involved. It's no video, it's just a phone call basically in a voice it's only. Literally uh, a thread for everything, and we got the veg chat on there, we had the boxing. I'll create any thread you want. You want to talk about anything? Uh I'll I'll create the thread so it's nice and neat. If we get told off, if we put something in the wrong chat, Martin is well, you know, you've got busy people that, you know, want to dip in and dip out of what they need to dip in and dip out of. They don't want to dip into ITFC and see a lot about beetroot curry. That's just not... Well, Tom, really Tom James did give the recipe, didn't he? He did. I haven't made it yet. He did. But here is your League One table to close tonight. Tonight? This afternoon's uh, Talking Town. Ipswich, let me just make it a little bit bigger. It needs to be in real big, bright lights. There we go. Courtesy of ITFC.co.uk. There is your league table. I will make it full screen. Ipswich Town oh, leading. It's one of them when you're going to have your eyes tested. It is, mate. Ipswich Town leading the pack. Oh, Peterborough United in second. Portsmouth look at them greens. In third. Look at them greens. Well, that that could look even better this time next week because it could be all five greens, which would be absolutely delightful. But you gave a hundred likes, so you got your league table. There it is. Enjoy it, savor it. But as our resident Peterborough United fan, who could also join the Discord if he plays four ninety nine, yeah, more than welcome. Yeah, he says it does say play five. Which is absolutely he's, he's very he, look, he's correct. He's correct. He is. They'll be there. They'll be there somewhere about as well with us at the end of the season, Posh. Oh, Pretty without sure. a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I've got no doubt about it. With Jack Marriott leading the way. Right, back tonight, 9 p.m. Back tomorrow, 8 30 p.m. With love, with care. Here's the cruncher and the media moguls on another family visit. It's shocking, isn't it? Really? He but... will be back next week, I'm sure. It'll be at a game, won't it? That'll be right. <laughs> Crazy from just the thought of you